What's up, crypto fam? It's been a minute. I'm Coach K, and we are going to look today into the market. I'm going to give you all the real analysis as to what's happening on a technical level, as well as what I'm thinking about for the macro cycles and the CPI and all of these different aspects of the market is the macro, the legacy markets. Are they going to affect us in a negative way or are we, when we're looking at a chart, starting to come out of that bearish trend and starting to create a bull trend, whether that be a relief rally bull trend that could last several months like it did back in 2019, just to drop us into our March 2020 spring, or are we going to start a bull run? My personal opinion will come soon, but what you guys need to do for me is like and subscribe, hit that video up. I'm going to share with you guys my list that has already made my club over 60% if they had bought completely 100%. So, you wanna know how to get in that and why I did it? Stick with me right now and let's get started. Back, you know, back, back, you know. All right, welcome everyone. We're gonna look at Bitcoin first. I'm gonna give you guys some good potential news that we might be having a relief rally. Now, a relief rally doesn't mean like, oh my God, like uh, we're gonna go down tomorrow. Uh, I'm saying this because I want you guys to be cautious not to get sucked into this FOMO I'm seeing all over Twitter where people are saying now we're in a bull market. Oh my God, you guys got to buy, buy, buy. Be very careful with that mentality. Buying is great, but take profit regularly because if it is a relief rally, we could go all the way up to $30,000, $29,000, and then we could drop right back down. But in the meantime, we have some really nice trade setups happening. So when we look at Bitcoin, right, we're breaking on the other side of the cloud. We had a Kumo breakout, but we haven't had a retest. So what I'm looking for is also what we're going to see is going to run into the Tenkin here. The Tenkin crossed above the Kijinsen. We're bullish. We had a bullish Kumo twist. We had our Chiku span cross above our red level, our Kijin, which is also quite bullish. And it's also broke out the cloud. So we're looking at the future in the past saying that this is probably going to go really nicely. So I looked at a trade here for myself. Um, I'm going to enter right around the bottom of the Kumo. And then I am going to ride that trade to at least this, this level of resistance slash support in the past that we've came to. So it's pretty easy for me to do that. And as you can see, the 3.84 R trade, meaning if I risk 100 and make $384, that's a great risk reward ratio. And that's being very, very conservative. I'll take profit there. I'll move a stop and I probably will move up and then move up and then move up towards that. This zone right around here, we have that resistance um, not just from there, but in the past, as you can see. So somewhere around here, we would like to probably take our last bit of profit because if we are not in a bull run, which I don't think we are going to be in one for a while, this is a really good trade that could potentially happen just on Bitcoin and make 53, 54, 50, 48, whatever percentage, if you're patient and wait for it to come back down. So I'm not telling you to buy right now. I never tell you guys to buy ever, but I'm telling you what I'm looking for personally to enter my own trades. My actual trades actually are already set in limit orders for this with my stop just around, uh, just under uh, 18,300. Because that would be an area where I'd say, okay, we lose the Kijin. It's probably not going to bounce right away. I'll, I'll look for in the next trade. I'll lose that one R and look for the next trade because maybe that will be the 12 R trade. I'll make back 11. I mean, make 12. If you make back 12 and you lost one, you are up 11. So this is how you traders have to think. Now, when we see Bitcoin do that, we're looking at a couple things. So first thing we're looking at is this. We have a 200 EMA right there that's kind of acted as resistance. I think we'll break it, but I think first we'll come retest the Kumo. It's a Kumo, uh, it's a Kumo breakout retest trade. It's a very strong trade when you have a bullish Chiku span. You're above the cloud. Your Kumo twist is bullish in the green side. Everything's said we are going to go up. And honestly, I talked about this three inside up here. This when I started buying Bitcoin is on that three inside up because that generally sparks a bottom and starts to build even if it's a local bottom not the bottom bottom because guess what guys i don't and no one else knows the bottom nor the top but we can look at indicators and get close to the bottom and the top and we start realizing what we should look for like a three inside up at a bottom for bitcoin is very strong a breakout of a kumo is very strong now we're bullish on the daily so we're looking for that bounce off the top and then we're going to go all the way up first level would be around 22 3 and then the next level will be around uh, 25 3 and then we go up to like around 29,000 would be 
what that trade would be for me on a good, great, uh, and it could take three months. So just be patient. Ethereum has the exact same trade setup, guys. We don't have the, the Kumo twist yet, but it looks like it's about to happen. We have a very bullish Chiku span. We have a breakout above the cloud. And on ETH, it's very interesting because it broke above the 200 EMA. And likely it still will come down because this is a support level and the Kumo top at the same spot. Then ETH has a long way up potentially. Uh, that's where I talked about, I took profit on and, and basically sold ETH at like 1950, 1940, something around there. Um, and I shorted ETH and then I took some profit as it started to come back above this level and I uh, didn't short it again. I just waited and now I've been starting to buy ETH a little bit as it broke into the cloud. So nothing too much yet. Remember, uh, I'm not trying to deploy too much capital yet. So I, I think that a safe amount, if you had like 100 grand you wanted to put in the market, would be to slowly scale it in like 10K at a time when you see markets dump. You generally don't want to join these types of big moves. You want to wait flatten out, kind of get a little bit boring, and then you're like, all right, what else is gonna cause the market to dump? Which is what I've been saying on a lot of things that I've been talking on, uh, and people have been talking, is like, what else could cause it to dump more? Um, we got BlackRock's now coming into, to, into tokenization and Bitcoin, and it's only gonna continue to grow. Those guys wanted to buy lower. I talked about this at 60K. They're not gonna buy it then. They're gonna be buying it now, uh, and they're gonna do it over the counter. And then once they have what they want, they're gonna push a positive narrative into the next cycle. This is where we're at. ETH has the same trade setup. Great opportunity here. Could go all the way to two grand again or close to it like we did before. Double top, come back down. In having cycles, we generally have like a little bit of a run up into them, and then we dump off. We don't always have the March thing, so we would have been maybe around here and then broken and started coming up. And generally after the halving for, a, for about a two, 365 days till you get to the top, okay? So knowing that, you're like, all right, well, if it takes about 365 on average to get to like the, the real first top, sometimes you have two like last cycle, but if it takes between a year and, and two years to go from here all the way to there, then we know that we have that opportunity right before having, um, you know, starting to accumulate. We want to accumulate down here, and that's kind of where we are now in the cycle. We're kind of down there, right? Different chart, things look a little bit differently, but we're kind of feeling like that's like the FTX, like we dumped, it finished off, and now we're breaking above the, can the cloud, right? And when you see these long, long downtrends, and we break above the cloud, the last time that happened in the last cycle was in April of 2019, and then we started really starting to push higher into June. It very well happen, very well could happen again this cycle. And if you look on the BLX, the same chart setup. It's a very bullish setup on a daily to see that after a three inside up, it makes me excited about the market, at least in the short term. But I don't get too much FOMO and do not go all in here. This is a very risky place because it's very likely to come up, come back down to somewhere around these levels again. Uh, so don't be buying too much if you are um, because you should be scaling in you should be taking your time now this video i made it for one reason is because i wanted to share my list of gems with you the idea is this is a list that i've comprised and i've done uh, and this is stuff that is as exclusive to the club as well as our community so without further ado the one million dollar list okay so what would i put a hundred k into right now if i want to focus on layer one ecosystems the technology the stuff that has tax the things that everyone uses their token to be able to access all these different tokens they have to use their coin to use their tokens on their blockchain so you need eth for all the eth coins right you need bnb for all the bnb coins so what this is is looking at ecosystems and what are the potentials of them uh, and so here's what I've done. I basically put 100, I put 100K down and I said, how much would I break down into each? And I'll tell you why I've done that. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, Elrond, Atom, Near, Kadena, Hedera, Hashgraph, Phantom, Algorand, Cardano, Quant, Avalanche, Matic, and Binance Coin. Now you'll notice there's different levels and that's mainly because I think that certain coins didn't come down enough. Uh, some of the coins that have a little bit less because they have maybe a few token distributions left. But in general, what I looked for when I was building this list is, can anyone dump on you from getting free tokens that they bought five years ago, three years ago, a year ago? And the answer is, for most of these, not every single one, so if you do your research, you'll know, 
Um, for most of these coins, to be honest, uh, they're fully distributed, meaning you could mine it, but you can't get like tokens for free because you invested in the project any longer. That's number one. Number two, what I looked at is how much liquidity, how much market cap of capital is in there, how much volume is traded every day. So I looked at those for a reason of if myself and all my friends buy into certain coins that are new, there's not enough liquidity for us to all sell, right? So if we want to take our profit, it actually dumps the price of the token. So I don't want to be a part of those types of things. As you guys know, I'm very, very organized and I'm also not really about that, that, you know, that kind of shady game that crypto plays. I'm more of a straight shooter. So, you know, people ask me, why this list? And I said, you know, it's very easy, in my opinion, for this list to turn into something that goes from 100K in investments to a million dollars. And from now until, as it says beside me, um, November 2025. Okay, so this is a buy and hold list. And obviously, it's not put all your money in and I didn't give you price targets because I'm not a financial advisor, but I'll tell you where I'm looking for just to give you some, some uh, clarity. So that's the first list. This is majors, layer ones, layer twos. The second list comprised of different, a bunch of different things, right? So different um, ecosystems, different um, technologies that would help crypto, thinking at storage and AI and all sorts of different stuff, right? And, um, you know, supply chains to internet uh, that, that can't be erased or be screwed with to cloud services um, to, you know, Oracle, like Link, uh, et cetera. So this is another list. Uh, there's more projects. There's a little bit less investment in each. So it's kind of a balanced portfolio. And if you guys look at the market, most of the stuff is down a lot which is a very good opportunity, even though it's come up like 50, 60, 100%, most of these could go like another 10X from where we're at right now. Some of them way more, to be honest. These are very, very conservative predictions. I'm looking at just the highs of the last cycle. So if they can break the highs of the last cycle, it could go higher than that. But I'm not trying to FOMO you guys in, I'm trying to give you a realistic expectation. But also when you want to sell, even if you make a million dollars in one of these projects, there's so much liquidity, as long as you don't sell it all at once, you won't drop the price. You won't screw anyone over. You won't feel bad that you accidentally took too much profit in the projects calling you and asking you why you've done that. Um, and even especially as like the influencer side, this is a really strong list because these projects are distributed. Number one, number two, if they have any distribution, it's like their team got some tokens or it's a staking mechanism or there are validators, et cetera, in the network that get rewards from this, but that's all good and positive. So we have Rune, um, Theta, it's for uh, Link for smart contracts, Anchor for cloud services, are we for internet, World Mobile token for mobile. Um, you know, they're, they're really making a big dent out in Africa right now, and I think they're gonna continue. They're started, just started in the United States. They work with Starlink, very legit company, uh, very well backed and have a lot of capital so they can make things happen. Eternity. now some people say, why Eternity? Uh, Pele just passed away. The only Pele NFT ever will be an Eternity NFT. There's a lot of stuff being done and from the all time high, like 75 bucks, remember 100% tokens are distributed. So no one's getting tokens for free to dump on you anymore. GRT, so these are all AI driven products, uh, projects, uh, the graph, our IRLC, our IRLC um, I exactly call it um, Fetch AI, Vet, Ocean, and Ajax Singularity DAO. These are all AI type projects. Um, I think that this is definitely going to be a trend Use ChatGPT for a week and start figuring out what you can do and you'll understand why I'm saying that. These are some really, really good narratives to go into. Uh, and I think even these projects alone could be very big for a good, well-balanced portfolio. So then we're looking at DeFi, right? Um, FXS, as you guys have seen, uh, I was telling, I want to send my list to my boys uh, and my ladies and my group. Uh, FXS literally was five bucks, like 550 last week, and now it's nine bucks today. So there's a lot of good movement on some of these coins, and we're looking at DeFi, what lasted? So RSR has lasted two cycles. FXS lasted last cycle. Comp is up a ton this week. Avi's up a ton this week. Yield's up a ton this week. Uh, and why? 
because they lasted the DeFi bear market, like the, all the stuff that went bad, the hacks, the stuff that's been going, they still lasted the test of time. People use their service. I know one of my friends took a loan on Aave so he could buy his house because the price of Bitcoin is low and he can loan against Bitcoin. And his Bitcoin that's collateral in there is going to become more collateral, not less collateral over the next year or two. So it's even better because after he could sell his Bitcoin, technically, at a higher price, pay off his house for free. Uh, so that's a really interesting concept. But I don't want to tell you guys how to do that because really, if you do it wrong, you can lose a lot of money. So uh, we'll focus on the things we can do. So DEXs, Bone, I don't know if you guys have watched. Bone is the gas for Shiba Swap. Now we all know that that is not going anywhere anywhere soon and we know as well one other thing. When the bull market starts, we're going to see Dogecoin, Leash, Bone, Quam, all these, all these, and obviously um, Shiba as well. All the Dogecoins, Dogecoin, they're all going to start running first. They all run really hard first. And it's kind of like everyone watches that while Bitcoin creeps and ETH creeps and then all of a sudden it swaps and Bitcoin and ETH start moving and then you have everything else start to follow after. So these are some to keep your eyes on. Bone, Woo, uh, Woo is basically what FXF was trying to do. Um, you know, there was a really unfortunate CEO there that ruined the company um, by blowing all the capital basically with no just cause. Um, but Wu is doing that and they have a team of 50 developers. They're, they're really, really uh, built a lot of really cool stuff. They have a DEX now as well. Uh, I would look at Wu because it has really good potential and it saves you money on trading and the more people that use it, the, the more they're going to improve it. And I think it's been around for a whole cycle and I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. So that's one that's uh, that would be really cool. I didn't put Uniswap and stuff because I feel like the upside is maybe not as much as these other ones. Um, and you know, like it, you could definitely put some other tokens on these lists. So don't, don't think you couldn't, but just put that there. So other ones like HTR, Hathor Network, it's a higher risk because I feel like they lost a little bit of their, their swag uh, going into this cycle from last cycle going into the bear market. But I believe they're still going to come back in the higher upside in terms of a layer one uh, for them. So could definitely do some really big bangs on a, on a portfolio. Quam, Shiba Swap, it's, uh, Quam is linked to like the Shiba guys and the Bone guys and the Leash guys and all these guys. So there's a lot of those same people. And I believe that, uh, you know, these, have, these are one of those ones where even though they seem kind of silly, they likely could be great in your portfolio. Same with Leash. So Leash and Bone and, and um, you know, and uh, Quam, those are like three in Shiba and stuff. If you're going to look at those types of coins, I feel like there's a lot of real stuff being built on these things. Um, and so it's really community driven and uh, we saw what happened with Shiba last cycle. So I'm kind of looking for those next opportunities, which are saying, yes, there's a risk to these ones, but a little bit of risk is good in a portfolio when you have a very a vast array of tokens. And then we can go and look at Leash right now. So I was telling my group, like Leash is at pretty much the bottom. It hit $8,000 last cycle. Uh, it's pretty much triple bottomed around here. I like to think that 280 would be a great buy area for me personally. Um, so would potentially even just down here at around um, $328. So what are we looking at for like Algorand? Algorand is not really in a buy zone yet. Uh, we, we actually have in this buy zone right here, if we extend it across, we would be looking for the price to come down back to this level right here. It coincides with a lot of levels and the bottom of the cloud and the, the, the Kijin and the Tenkin. So it's likely that a good area um, to put a buy order. I, I put a buy order just today right around the same level, around 21 cents. Um, Aptos, one thing to be worried about. There is token distribution still for Aptos. I don't know when they start, but it's something to keep in mind, even though it can have a crazy run, there are going to be people that get tokens that they bought for a lot cheaper um, and then they're going to potentially sell those tokens on you as the liquidity provider for them. So just be very cognizant of that because it could cause you a lot of pain. Uh, one that I just bought today for a potential trade um, is, is um, Cosmos. I think that I bought it maybe just a starter position. I'm going to buy more if it comes down to the 200 EMA to retest it again. But I'm kind of also looking for that, that twist we're starting to see some bullish signs on the chart here. 
Uh, you know, our Chiku spans bullish. We're almost above the cloud. Our, our Tenkin went above our Kijin. The 21 EMA is hooked up, so there could be some momentum here. Uh, just want to see if it can hold this level at the bottom of the cloud right there. As you can see the future. Uh, and that's where I would be buying a little bit more and to see if that trade was going to go and bounce off and go further. Uh, I do believe Adam is going to have a really, really good move. And we got into our buy zone earlier in the year. And uh, that's been extremely profitable already had you been watching my videos since back in June when I posted all these levels before they even got hit. AVAX is, a, is kind of an, a weird looking chart. I would want to see it pop out of the cloud and kind of come down to this level right here around 15. That would make me feel better. And it could obviously come all the way down here to that $14 range. So I'm looking at these two levels, one and then two, as levels that I could potentially buy in. I have not bought in yet, but I have a lot of buy order set up. Same with BNB, um, looking at that down, down this $269 to $70 range. If it comes down and bounces up the Kijin because the cloud is really flat, or we break out of the cloud, retest it, and we start going higher. So I'm watching for everything right now, uh, but I have orders placed and set up so I can get into the best positions I can. Same thing with this. We touched the top of the cloud, rejected. Now we'll likely come to the very bottom of the cloud. We have a level right here at 550. We have a level right here for our Kijin at 535. So these are levels where you can look at as well. So I can keep going on and on and on about this, but if you look at a chart with an Ichimoku on it, you can see what I'm actually projecting here. And I likely think we're going to go lower with KDA. So my, my buy orders are pretty much around this monthly open. It's around like 87, 88 cents. And Phantom, Phantom never came down to as low as I thought it would, um, mainly because it wasn't a head and shoulders, but it just looked like it was losing steam and it might lose this level. Did not do it, but it still potentially could. I just don't think it's very likely anymore because... Um, We've gone above the Kijin and uh, likely an area, a really good area to buy in because it broke out and never retested would at least be 24, even could be 25, 26 cents off the Kijin. So we're looking for that. That's a totally bullish chart technically other than the fact that it's getting rejected by the 200 EMA. And we've talked about near protocol for a long time. It's still technically in one of my buy zones right here. It's just, just above it. Nothing, no harm in going back to $2 and buying um, at that level if it comes back down. I did start buying as it hit that like under $2 because like, that made me really excited because I didn't think it would go that low. Uh, but yeah, basically this was like a great buy for me around this area. Um, and I've, I bought more, a little bit more as well last week uh, when I made the list. Uh, Quant is also starting to look like it potentially could get a bullish, uh, we're breaking in the Kumo edge to edge trade. We're looking to get up to you know 157. We have all the factors, but they're not fully crossed yet. So it's not 100% sure. So I would be personally waiting for Quant to break out and retest before going in. Um, but you know, if you want to pick up some for spot and it's just completely spot and that's all you want to do is just hold for a while, that's uh, never a terrible time. Same with this guy right here, Rune. It's just breaking out. I would expect it to come down to this level at least. So that 155 range is looking, 154.5 range is looking really good. So then I hit both of my levels, went below my levels, um, you know, second buy zones. But look, came down there, rebounded from that, uh, from that FUD, and now it's gone up. And again, similar types of clouds everywhere, bullish signs coming out, but not yet crossed over here or in the, in the Kumo. But this definitely could break out, retest over here and go a little bit on the run. But we have all these 200 EMAs. You see how they always come and they're kind of stacking above, like a top of, like top of a jump on a, when you're jumping on a trampoline. It's like you get there and it's like, oh, sorry, and it pushes you down. You're seeing that on a lot of charts right now. So something also to take a notice of, you see how that 200 EMA is kind of getting down there. It might, have, it might come down lower and lower into this year. Uh, and then we have this rejection off the Kumo bottom. We don't have that cross of the green over the red or Tenkin over, over Kijin. We do have a bullish Q, uh, uh, Chiku span, but yeah, I'm not too I'm not too confident yet. I would look, and I was saying I was saying today, like someone asked me, like, how do you know where you should buy in? I was like, honestly, like this would probably be the strongest level to buy in, uh, around 78 cents. But it wouldn't harm you to to look at that Kijin level right here at like 85, and and kind of have a a little bit of a scale in around that level as well. So yeah, there's a lot more projects we could talk about. Eternity is definitely one that's starting to make higher lows. That's very bullish, um, but it still needs some time to work itself out as well. RLC looks really, really primed to, to go. 
and it's because it's also linked to the AI side of things. And then we have, you know, our Arweave. Arweave is kind of doing a Keygen bounce right now, but we don't have the perfect factors for here. So we're going to wait on Arweave. Uh, Ajax as well, it's doing a really classic trade, the Keygen bounce trade, um, but we're seeing these long wicks up. So there's some sell pressure up here. We're going to keep our eyes on that, but we see how we broke out over here and we retested the Kumo and we went a little bit lower and then we started to break out. That is what the key, that's what I'm telling you for Bitcoin and a lot of these trades. That is the trade we are looking for. And remember, the longer you trade in these, uh, in, in this market, the more accurate you'll get. And when you're doing your risk management, right, on your trades, what you want to do is you always want to be like, all right, so it might go to the 100. So that's my risk. What's my reward? So you do it and you go, okay, at that time, let's say it was here. You're going to make five times as much. 5.13 makes you're going to make five times as much as you're going to lose. If I risk $100, I'm going to hit my stop loss, I lose $100. But if I hit this level, I gain $513. So if you make a few mistakes when you're trading, even half of your trades like this hits, even 30% hit, you will always end up up every single month. So that's what you have to understand. And that could have been a take profit. You may have let that ride a little bit with 30, 40, 50, 60% of the trades still open. And then you could have wrote it higher. As you see, there's momentum, right? You may want to sell now because you'd see the volume drop off and these long wicks. So it's starting to top out a little bit. So likely we're going to see it come down to this 15, around 15, 16, 16 cent range for FET. And it could literally bounce off that and continue on its way up. So that is what it looks like when you break out, retest, and you go higher. It's all right there. This is how you trade these things. It's not as hard as you think. And we're looking for the same trade, up, trade setup over and over again. So it sounds way easier than it is, but I trade on the daily. I'm patient. I'm not trying to get rich quick. This could take, I'm in trades that happen for six months sometimes, but when you close them, it's very rewarding because your risk is there. You're sitting, you don't have to watch all the time. There's one candle a day, not one candle a minute or every five minutes. So you can really relax on good fundamentals looking at projects. So here's one that's interesting. Why is because it broke out the, the Kumo right here, but it never retested. Likely we're going to see some toppy type of candles right here. Some shooting star type candles, but they're more just dojis, right? I'm looking for this level likely to come back down. And so I'd be looking to buy around 21 cents for ocean. So we're looking at, you know, it could drop down, let's say 25%, 2020 to 25%. It even could drop down from here all the way to uh, 26% bounce off this level, but likely because we have this cloud like rising up, we would come somewhere in this 21 EMA. So I'd put my order uh, to buy somewhere right here or here and wait for it to come down. And uh, patience is a virtue, guys. It's hard to do, but the amount of money that I have made this cycle in the bear market just by sitting, being patient, and now I look at my, on my accounts and all those trades that I made uh, they set in a limit order like months and months ago. They all hit. Now they're all way above those levels, 60, 70%. Uh, it feels good, but you just have to be very patient and not like in a rush to get there. Again, VET starting to set up for nice movement. Wu has already had its nice movement, broke out, tested the Kumo, broke above right away, retested the 200 EMA. I still think we could come way back down to 15, even as low as 14.9. Uh, up to 15.7 would be my area to keep my eyes on. Uh, we have Ave right here. Again, we've broken out. We, we broke up right here. We retested. We've rejected three times this 200 EMA. Likely we come back down to 74. Um, and then what we would watch for is on the fifth attempt of this trying to break it, will it break it? So it, calls, it ran into resistance as well. As you see, my resistance level is just at the same level, almost just a little bit lower as the 200 EMA. So it's rejecting off a resistance level and the 200 EMA, so it's really strong. So we'd likely come back down before we go for that attempt, and likely we'll see it break through. Comp, another one, perfect trade setup right now. A Kumo, literally a one candle Kumo breakout. That's crazy. Uh, and the, the craziest thing is I shared this about eight days ago with my group. And eight days ago uh, was the 6th or 7th, 8th January. So I literally shared it with them and they were up 50% like that. And this is why our club is so amazing because I want to share with them and my thoughts and how I'm thinking about everything as well. RSR, another one, stand test time. Keep watching it. There's, I think, 
on seed, there might be 40% of the tokens left to distribute to everyone, and then there's no more token distributions. That's very bullish for a project because the seed holders have held since before last cycle. I bought my seed SAF with RSR a um, long time ago. It's been like over five, six years I've been waiting for those tokens. Great one, you, YLD. These are the only, this is one of the only CeFi platforms that actually cares about risk, cares about their customers in my opinion. Um, the They really, really are doing things in, a, in the, the right way in my opinion. And um, you know, they adjust the rates, they keep things in a position where they're not gonna be a Celsius and all this stuff. Uh, and they offer multiple products, but they're not lending money. They're not lending your capital out, and which we already know is what the downfall of most of these platforms were. Um, they have age-adjusted risk strategies and stuff like that as well. So looking at this guy right here, Anchor, kind of waiting for it to kind of break out. It might happen a little bit later in the month or, or in the start of next month, but it's going to likely happen. We see that flattening out of that 200 EMA. We can reclaim that, and then it's, uh, then it's pretty much up from that point on. So I'm gonna stop there because I don't wanna bore you guys too much. Just wanna remind you guys the club gets this. I'm, sending, I'm sharing with you guys because these are all highly liquid coins. Stuff when you go on coin market cap, most of them have at least 100 million. On, on, on the first list, it's all like 300 million up. So lots of great opportunities for you guys. And I think that my real, my real big piece is I try to tell people the things that I'm doing because I know that it's successful so that they can figure out how to be successful themselves. So I kind of tell you what I'm doing because also I'm transparent and I don't play games and I don't lie to you. Uh, I think it's really valuable uh, information to know that I don't ever take promotions for money and all this stuff. I get offered them all the time. I don't want people to give me their money. I have money. I can make my own money. Uh, I'm here to give you guys value. All right, guys, so that's basically it. I'll see you next week. I know this was a little bit of a longer video, but I really wanted to break down everything. And don't forget that we have our club. Uh, you guys can find it on OpenSea. And, uh, you know, go and if you want to get in, there's only four for sale left. I want to give value to you guys too. This is why I'm sharing this with you after the fact and giving you some areas to look at so that you can obviously, um, you know, set yourself up for success. Uh, and understand a little bit what I'm thinking of because I get asked that a lot. Much love, Coach K fam. See you guys soon. I'll be dropping more alpha every single week, and I'll try to be doing more videos as well, so keep your eyes out, but don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell so that you get to see that information first because, you know, sometimes things move pretty quickly, and I try to get that information to you as fast as possible. Much love. Back, you know, back, back, you know. Fat kiddo, huge fat kiddo.